23, how many st structural isomers of pentanol will contain a chiral carbon? Now, I've drawn all four out. Right, you can pause the video and check whether you do have these four structures. And then from these four structures, we will see that we can check the chiral carbons. For the first one, there's no carbon that's joined to four different groups. So this is out. For this one, there is a chiral carbon here. Okay. It's joined to one CH3, two groups, a hydrogen, and a CH2OH. So there's a chiral carbon here. This structure, there isn't a chiral carbon. If you're wondering about this carbon, it's joined to CH3 and also CH3. So none of the carbons here are joined to four different groups. Finally, in this isomer, there are no carbons that's joined to four different groups. So we only have one primary alcohol that contains a chiral carbon. Twenty four student X claim that all seventeen carbon lie on the same plane. Now it's easy to prove that this student is wrong by first just first of all just looking for carbons that have four bonds. You look for carbons that have four bonds here, right here, here, here. And then we look at the carbons that have four bonds, and if we do, we do see that they are joined to other carbons then they will be 109 and a half degrees tetrahedral tetrahedral here tetrahedral here with respect to the other carbons so this will also mean that not all will lie on the same plane not all are flat 180 d so this is out not this is out student y claims that it displays cis-trans the student is actually focusing on here now in a ring, unless the ring has eight, eight carbons and all that, the transversion is very unstable. Okay, there will be no trans unless we are talking about eight carbon ring and above. So if you look at here, we only have about six carbon ring. The transversion will be too unstable to exist. We only have the cis version. Now, within your syllabus, it's very unlikely that they give you uh, a big ring that's more than 8 and expect you to know whether there's cis trans or not. Okay. More often than not, in general, you can assume that if you have a double bond within a ring, there will not be a cis trans. So both student X and student Y are wrong. So neither of them are correct. Twenty-five. Which isomer gives the greatest number of alkenes when dehydrated? Now, dehydrated, you have to remove the OH together with a H from a neighboring carbon. The easiest one to look at will be the to figure out their alcohols, whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary. We have primary here. This one is a secondary alcohol, and this one is a tertiary alcohol. Right, we will eliminate the primary alcohol first. They are the easiest to figure out. We remove the OH and we remove a H from a neighboring carbon. So it must be this H. The double bond will be here. Right, and then if you check here, there's no geometric isomer. There's no cis trans because this carbon has two of the same groups, two hydrogens here. So there's only one isomer. Same for here, the primary alcohol. If we remove this and one hydrogen, the double bond forms here. Right, there's no cis trans geometrical isomers here because again two hydrogen down here. So there's only one isomer here. Number we look at the secondary one. Secondary, we can actually remove from quite a few places. We can remove this hydrogen, or rather this hydroxyl from here and this hydrogen and when we have it we have the double bonds down here and then if you check there is a possibility of a cis trans 
if the double bond is found here. So we have a cis version, we have a trans version. We have two possible isomers for now. But don't forget, we could also remove the OH from here and this hydrogen. So I'll erase it and start again. Removing this OH and removing this H, we will end up with the double bond being formed here. And then if you look at here, here we have again a possibility of a cis trans if the double bond was from here. So we have two from just now and two more from here. So there's a total of four possible structures. Okay, I'll show you the drawn structure after the end of the, this question so you can check whether you drew it correctly. To check C, C we can remove this OH and this hydrogen. And if you check the double bonds, there's no cis trans down here because of this carbon. So we have one. Right. If we were to remove this OH and any of this on the left and right is the same, it's symmetrical. So we move from here and we fo focus on this carbon. Okay, I'll remove the previous double bond so it doesn't look so confusing. Right, removing OH from here and the H from here, we have a double bond now here and then there is a possibility of it having a geometrical isomer here. So we have two versions if we have the, this double bond on this side, the cis and the trans. So total for here, possibility, we have three. Okay. So more often than not, the primary alcohols will only get one isomer. And then you have to check the secondary and the tertiary, more likely. I'll show you the structures for B and C, the possible structures you could get if you actually drew them out. Okay, you can pause the screen to to check the structures at your time. Right, so this there are the three for C, the four possible ones for B. Twenty six compound X changes the color of dichromate that means it can be oxidized and then it reacts with two moles of HCN alright so what it means first of all it can be oxidized and will have carbonyl groups so aldehyde can be oxidized so possible these are ketones so it will not be oxidized so we don't have to consider them aldehyde can be oxidized Aldehyde again can be oxidized. Right, then we have to sort out between these aldehydes. The aldehydes react with two moles of HCN. Now, if you have one aldehyde group, you will react with one mole of HCN to form this product. So actually what it means is you need two groups of aldehydes if you want you have to react with two moles of HCN. So this is one only one group of aldehyde. There's only one group of aldehyde here. We have two groups of aldehyde for D. Okay. 